time. Okay, I'm back. So now we're going to start painting. I put out all my colors onto my disposable palette, which is a wax palette. <clears throat> and I'm going to start, <coughs> pardon me, by picking up a little bit of um, blue. And because, as you can see, with the liquid white, I can go ahead and I can make this as blue. See? It allows the paint to blend. want to add some lavender maybe a little bit of orange you're doing crisscross strokes and I don't know if you can notice, I'm going like in X's. It's not, whenever you're starting an, a landscape painting period, you don't want to start over here, go jump down to there. You want to start from the top and you want to work your way down. I'm going to add a little bit of crimson, I think. Just a little bit. This painting is going to have a mountain in it, and it's going to have a lake, and it's also going to have um, some reflections in the water. Go back and forth. Now for the water, I'm going to come into the center, and I'll pick up a little bit more blue because I don't have much left on my brush. So whatever colors you have in your sky, you want to reflect that back into your water. Remember that when you're doing water, the strokes need to be straight. They can't be like this. If you start making your strokes like that, it's going to look like your uh, water's falling off your page. <clears throat> So just go back and forth. Oh, it's moving. Got a hair, take that out, back and forth, another one. <clears throat> now I'm going to do some, some clouds. So I'm going to pick up my fan brush and I'll show you how I'm loading it. Right here, fully loading it in white paint. It's a little dry, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of the um, the oil painting medium liquid clear. You can also use uh, terpenoid naturals if you wanted to. So my brush is fully loaded. When creating a cloud, you want to make sure that you are making circles. I see we're having a problem. Let me just take off the autocorrect. That's why this thing is jumping all over. And that's not very good for you people to look at. There. Now it'll be better. So I'm just creating circles. I'm using the corner of my brush. I'll pick up some more white and place it just on the top of the cloud. so that the bottom of the cloud is a little bit darker. You can take your brush and twist it back and forth this way as well. 
hold it between two fingers and twist. What we don't want to see are cotton balls. That was grade one. We're a little bit more advanced than that. Clouds are very easy to do. It's never this flat part of your brush. It's always a corner. If you use the corner, you'll find that you will have more control. I might add another one over here. My mountains are probably going to be centered. So if they're centered, what I'm going to do is make sure that I have clouds in behind the mountain so when the mountain is painted in you'll see it you can come along and go like this as well to create small distant little fuzzies I think I want to emphasize this a little bit more up here you can put as many or as few clouds as you like, it's your painting. And I am a firm believer that no matter whose class you're taking, it's your painting. You make it your own. That's what the beauty of art is. It's not to come out looking like an absolute replica, replica of what the teachers looks like. You will take a blending brush, which this is, or a, a, they call it a cake brush. If you wanted these clouds to be fluffy, you would just come and very lightly, as Bob Ross used to say, two hairs and some air. And you can come back and just distort them a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more white here because I don't like how that turned out. Remember, clouds are all different shapes. Now, I also teach um, landscapes in acrylic. So you can really take any uh, oil painting and convert it into acrylic. So instead of using a liquid white, you would use an extender under your canvas, then apply your white coat, do the fingerprint test, and the fingerprint test is applying your finger, turning it over, and if you have the look of a, a uh, fingerprint, it's perfect. If you cannot see the lines of your fingerprint, then you've got way, way, way too much white on, just take a paper towel and wipe some of that off. There, I'm kind of liking that, the way that looks. So you can see my lake, you can see my sky. <clears throat> what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a palette knife. This is a Bob Ross, doesn't really matter, any kind of palette knife. You can use a plastic one or whatever. As a matter of fact, I think I will use a plastic one because I'm working in a very small space. I'm going to pick up a little tiny bit of black on my brush, on my, my brush, on my palette knife. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to lay in a mountain. Don't make it look like Dolly Parton where they're all the same size and and um, perfect even round points. That's not the look that you're going for when you create a mountain. When you're putting out you, um, <clears throat> your uh, uh, oil paints, you need very very little oil paint to create you don't use anywhere near as much as if when you're painting with acrylics. So I think I'm kind of liking the way this looks. So now I'm going to pull this down. A lot of people wonder how you get the shape. So I pull this all out. So really, you're practically taking the paint back off. I'm going to wipe off my palette knife. 
What matters now is picking up the white paint. So if you notice, I'm going to come here, flatten it out, and just pick up a little tiny bead of white paint. I'm going to start with this one here. If I come here and I hold my palette knife with two fingers, not like this, just two fingers, you're going to come and you will pull this white and it will automatically break. This is now where you decide um, your shape. So I want this one to come down here, into here. And by doing that, I just pushed this one into the back. I'm going to pick up a little bit of lavender and again my white. And I'm going to come this way and pull down this way. Now I hope you can see that I've got one coming this way and one mountain going that way. I'm just blending some colors here on my um, palette. Again, oh, that's way too much. So by me pulling this one in the front, I just pushed him to the back. So now I'll come here and I'll pull, need some paint to paint, and I'll pull this one forward. You can see the different colors that are developing. They're picking up the sky colors. It's almost like buttering bread, but like I say, if you hold it, barely touching it in your hand, that's what's going to allow you to allow the, the um, I want this to be a little bit darker here. So what I've done here is I've just, I've added more black. Now come along, pull forward. By doing your angles, that's what decides um, the depth, pushing something forward, having something to the back. I'm just going to add a little bit more of the blue on this side of the mountain, a little bit more white. Maybe a little bit of black over here. <clears throat> bit of black here. And a little bit more white here so that I will push that one to the back and I think we're going to call this complete. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. I can bring some black here and pull that forward and that just pushed everything into the back. So again, just a couple of fingers is what you're using. To hold on to that palette knife. Don't hold it really, really tightly. If you hold it tightly, you're going to have trouble. There's some beautiful artists to watch out there. Um, William Pickford, Bob Ross, Bill Alexander. There's many, many people. So there's my mountains. Put my paper towel back up there. Great, you can still see, perfect. 
So I'm just going to clean off my palette knife, <clears throat> set it off to the side. So what I'm going to do now <clears throat> is I'm going to pull shadows of this mountain down into my lake. So I'm just using the dirty brush that I had before from when I was doing my uh, clouds. So I'm going into the mountain and I'm pulling out. Easy, easy. Make sure they're straight. If you wanted it to look like there was movement, you would come with your blending brush, my blending brush, and come across, and it'll make it look like there's movement in the water. So I'm going to start with sap green in the back. And I'm going to pick up another green, which I believe is phthalo green, or it could be viridian. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start placing in pine trees. So I'm going to come here, and on the corner of my brush, never, never flat this way, always on a corner. And I'm going to come back and forth. Now this green is a little bright for my liking, so I'm going to pick up a little black because something that's in the distance is not jumping right out at you. <clears throat> so I'll put another one here. Again, pull down. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put some just some greenery in the foothills just like so again pull and it has to be straight don't make it crooked picking up another shade of green I'm gonna make this one taller You want to make sure that you're staggering your um, heights. You don't want your heights all the same. You want them different. You might even put a bit of the screen in here. Pull it down. I'm going to come over to this side and I'm having smaller ones. They're smaller because they're in the distance, doesn't matter what they look like. If you really look at things that are way far in the distance, you don't really pay attention, you don't see detail. All you're seeing is the shape of the, the object. Once you start uh, painting landscapes, you will have a completely different love of nature. I um, really noticed a huge difference when I started um, painting landscapes, you look at sunsets differently, everything's different. When you're painting your pine trees and you come down and you make sure, you know, you try to fill them in Make sure you're pulling down. We're doing reflections all the way across. Put another one there because these are all different colors of green. <clears throat> Let's have a nice tall guy up there. Just going to come in here, put a little bit of dark, just 
just to show that maybe these are the rocks along the shoreline. Don't forget, pull down. Everything, once you start a reflection, everything needs to be reflected. Again, I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to come across. This brush is not very good. It's too good. This is, oh, there we go. So what I've done is just come across and I've distorted the reflection. I hope you can see that. Here I'm going to come down and just add some brown. You might even want to bring that right out into your water. Again, remember, reflections straight down. come and make a lighter green. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tap not quite light enough. I'm just going to tap in some grasses. Again, pull down. Got a hair. I'm going to take some white and some green, make a lighter green. And I'm going to come in here, I'm going to add some highlights. You probably won't be able to see them, but they're there. Just here and there. Now what I don't have in front of me shame on me. Oh yes I do. I have a liner. So I'm going to make a darker color and just pull up and just create some trunks of the trees. They don't have to be perfect. Now that one I kind of wrecked, so I'm going to come back with my brush and tap it out. That's what's nice about oil painting. If you make a mistake and you don't like what you see, you can fix it. I'm going to come in here and put in some grass. I have thinned down this paint. With the liquid clear. I'm going to come back here. And set those in because we don't want those just floating around going anywhere. I 
I clean my brushes with the Blue Dawn soap. It takes out any oil paint, does an incredible job. Some people don't believe in doing that, but I'm not into the chemical stuff. So if I can get away with not using it, then I will. I'm going to take my palette knife, I'm going to wipe it off. And I'm going to apply some more clean white paint because now I want to set the water in. So you pick up a little bit like before when you were doing your mountains and you're going to come along here and go across like this. By doing that, you can see that I'm setting in water. Remember, doing these lines, keep them straight. Don't um, curve them. If you curve them, your water's going to fall off of your canvas. That would not be a good thing. Because the, the person that's viewing your work, their eye is going to go slant in the direction that your water is. The water really shows up pretty in the uh, dark reflections. I don't care if it's picking up some colors from the um, wet paint that's up there underneath. Like currently it's picking up some green, but that's okay because it's just showing you the reflections of what you've already seen. I'm going to wipe my palette knife, pick up some more white. Make these ones just a little bit darker. You do not blend this out. You leave that the way it is. I'm going to take a fan. No, I'm going to take a foliage brush. I'm going to fully load it in a green and I'm going to come here and put in some bushes. You want the edges to look ragged. You don't want them to be blended out perfectly. I might add a little bit of crimson here, alizarin. We don't know what kind of bush this is, doesn't matter, it's our painting. Now oil paints will take longer to dry depending on how much uh, paint you used, how thick you applied, will depend on how long it's going to take to dry. So just keep that in mind. Don't take your finger after a day and think, oh, I can try this. It'll be dry. No, it's not. I did that in the beginning. Learned the hard way. I've just added some orange here. And I might even go into some white. Mixing on my palette and just making this a little darker. It could almost look like it's ground cover. Picking up a green. Tapping it in. Got a big 
dark spot there that I don't like. I'm going to mix some white with that green to get a really brighter green. Because this corner is just a little bit too dark for me. There. That's oil painting. Easy. Oil painting 101, if that's what you want to call it. <laughs> simple, simple. Remember, it takes a while to dry. I'm going to put some white. Oops, a little bit too much white. I wanted to lighten this, but not quite that much. There, we're done. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a try. It's oil paints with Sugate. Signing out. Thanks for watching.